Macho Mandalorian is here! Oh, yeah! Hey guys, Django Fett here, hunting down games, comics, TV shows, movies, and more. And this is a review of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. This is the prequel series to the Harry Potter series. And it's set about 80, 90 years. I don't remember the approximate years. But it's set way before the years of Harry Potter. And is a standalone series. So it stars Eddie Redman, Ezra Miller, Catherine Waterston, Dan Fugler, and Colin Farrell, as, many, as well as many others. And focuses on a person named Newt Scamander, who I thought for the longest time was Newt Salamander. <laughs> Newt Scamander is the protector of a briefcase that houses creatures that Scamander wants to test, as well as release into the wilds. So he wants to uh, observe these animals in this briefcase and when you open it up and go into this briefcase it's pretty amazing. A couple of the creatures actually become free. There are some other things that go along with the story as well but in a nutshell some of the creatures get loose and they try to capture the beasts as best they can. I actually really love the Harry Potter movies. I love them all from 1 through 9. Watch every single one in theaters but for me personally, I felt like the last one, part two of Deathly Hollows, was just not fulfilling. I didn't feel like it was a proper end to the series. Now, I might have to rewatch them all over again and might think differently, but when I watched it in theaters, I felt like it wasn't a proper ending to the series. But overall, it's a great series. And I was definitely looking forward to Fantastic Beasts and was really, really anticipating this film. And it, boy, did it not disappoint whatsoever. I really love this movie. It's radically different from the Harry Potter films, and that's to be expected. He runs into some other company, as well as uh, a muggle, or a no mage, as they call it in New York, or in America. And he is great. He is a really great new character. Uh, it's a really great uh, thing to put a muggle-born, a person who no, uh, doesn't have the magical abilities, to be put into this universe and is like us, you know, looking at all of these magical things that are going along in the movie. It's just the epitome of the audience just being wowed at the whole time. And I thought he was a really good character in this movie. Newt, however, he was alright. He was alright. He was like this really shy, weird type of character, offbeat type of character. Overall, it feels like you're in another magical world in New York City. Even though it's more bleak than Hogwarts because it's in the 90s, this is the 30s. Way bleak, colorless almost. You go into this expecting it to be kind of boring because it's set in the 30s, but they make it really work. Visually, it's amazing to look and the magical abilities that they use and they do as well as seeing all the different creatures. The creatures are look really great. There's one that steals money, and that one is pretty cool. I like that one the most. That one's pretty funny. I like that one a lot. And the rest of the creatures are all unique and different in their own right, and really work in this film overall. I love all the different creatures and seeing them all in the briefcase. As soon as you go in the briefcase, it's a whole nother world. And I loved seeing that more than I would New York City and the story is good for what it does it's it does take its twists and turns and I do like that uh, it's not straightforward they have to find these creatures and that's it there's more to the story in that and I like that and the villains however that's a whole nother story because there wasn't a strong villain what whatsoever and I didn't even know there was a villain in the movie up until the end and it was kind of weird how they did that the villain reveal at the end ruined it for me. It ruined the film for me. It definitely uh, put it down a notch. Did I hate the film for it? Absolutely not. But it it did leave a bad, really, really bad impression into the film. As well as a couple of major plot points that were not explained or fixed. There was just a bunch of plot holes. Not too many, but a couple of big ones that they never explained whatsoever and they just left it out in the open. So I am giving Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them a... Now if you go into this movie expecting it to be another big Harry Potter film with amazing characters, amazing story, 
just like Harry Potter in every way, you're going to be sorely disappointed. You're going to be hugely disappointed because it's not like that in any way. It's got some good characters, maybe even okay characters, all right story, but the wizarding world and seeing all of the magic in action is what captivates me throughout this whole movie. And I cannot wait to see what they do with the other movies because I, I still don't know what they're going to do. I still have no freaking clue what they're going to do. And this is based off one book. One book and they're going to make five films out of that. I have no idea what they're going to do. They have to make more books and they have to... I don't know. They're going to drag it on for quite a bit. And the villain... He's going to probably be in more films. It's probably going to ruin the movies a bit. I'm just going to say that. But overall, I'm really looking forward to this new Fantastic Beasts uh, series. I'm really looking forward to that. I don't know where they're going to go from here. But I am definitely looking forward to J.K. Rowling's new films. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, Django Fett. And I'll see you, my fellow Mandalorian. Mandalorian, but this is... Next time. Ooh, yeah!